What is a placenta? Given that the eutherian mammals are typically referred to as the placental mammals, it should be obvious. It is when there is blood leaving the endometrium of the uterus, which then bathes the chorion of the fetus so that uh, there can be an exchange between the blood in the intravillous spaces uh, this is maternal blood, and the blood vessels of uh, the fetal tissues, so that oxygen can go into the fetal tissue, carbon dioxide can go into the maternal blood, that sugars, amino acids, fatty acids can go to the fetal tissue, urea can pass into the maternal blood, etc. The fetal cells which compose the placenta are composed of extra embryonic membranes. Not all of the cells of an embryo will end up comprising the body of the embryo, but rather many, which begin development in the second week of embryonic life, form extra embryonic membranes, membranes of embryo's cells outside the body proper of the embryo. So the chorion is very important, formed from the cytotrophoblast, and here represented in red. This is what performs gas exchange and forms the fetal part of the placenta. In an amniotic egg, this is the membrane just within the egg shell that performs gas exchange. Also, there is a yolk sac, and blood vessels from the yolk sac uh, will be mentioned in chorovitalin uh, placentas. And there is a bag which can store urinary waste known as the allantois. Uh, here it is depicted in green. And uh, blood vessels uh, from the allantois can contribute to the placenta in a chorioallantoic placenta. In addition to the eutherian or placental mammals possessing a chorioallantoic placenta, this is also found in several marsupials, which are not considered, quote, placental mammals, and also two genera of lizards, of skinks, possess this type of placenta. There is another type of placenta in mammals, the choriovitalin placenta, in which fetal tissue from the chorion is joined by blood vessels from the yolk sac instead of the allantois. This is present in typical eutherian or placental mammals early in development before the chorioallantoic placenta develops. And this is the predominant type of placenta in marsupials. Thus, marsupials are placental mammals. They just typically possess a different type of placenta. If, however, a placenta is defined simply as contact between maternal and fetal cells where nutrition is exchanged, there are a number of fish and amphibians, for example, which then would have a placenta. The maternal tissues can contact the yolk sac or may stretch into the gill region and the fetal uh, fish or amphibian may uh, develop specialized fin folds, pectoral fins, anal structures, uh, a, a pericardium in one case, an expanded urinary bladder in another case, uh, which contact maternal tissues for nutrient exchange. And so thus, uh, there are diverse types of placenta if this uh, is defined as contact between maternal and fetal cells. The placentas of eutherian mammals could be further subdivided based on whether the cells of the fetal trophoblast contact maternal epithelia, endothelia, or blood, and also whether the cells of the fetus simply attach to the endometrium or invade the endometrium so that the endometrium grows around it.